Well, it started in the beginning. In the beginning... Can you hear Hello? me? Yeah. So, uh, you you want you want to tell us a little bit about your situation? Because maybe there's somebody in here that can help. You know what I mean? If if you're okay. not ready, that's fine. But yeah, you I never can, know, I, huh? Yeah, I can I can talk a little bit about it. Okay. Well, it started in the beginning. In the beginning, what had happened was I get a social security check every month, and I had to have a payee at the time. And so I had to get, well, the only person that I trusted was family. This is where they say family will burn you worse than people on the streets will. Mm -hmm. So I had to get my uh, auntie to become my payee. Me and my son, we was living in a nice two bedroom apartment. I mean, real, real nice, you know, and I had to get my rent paid. So I was depending on my aunt that when she got my check every first of the month to pay my rent. She got a check on the third. So what she would do is, instead of paying my rent, she would sit there and blow it off and wait till the third when she got her check, which would put me back in rent because by the third now, I got lay fees. So them right. lay, they, them lay fees, they ended up adding up and adding up. So I ended up had to get evicted, not because of me, but because the irresponsibility of my payee. So that landed me and my son into a shelter. So while we was inside of the shelter, I'm stressed out. I'm like, I cannot believe I just lost the roof over my head. I'm trying to figure out how I can get another roof over me and my son's head because I know that little bed with a child. Because you know the state, they'll snatch up the children. They're, even if you ain't got, a, even if you got a roof over your head, if you if you ain't got lights on in the house and you struggling and you didn't pay your light bill or for whatever reason, they'll take your children out the household if you ain't got no lights. On. You know, they ain't trying to hear that. You know how we is. We old school, you know what I'm saying? From where I come from, if you struggling and you don't got no lights in your house, you gonna go get some candles. You gonna, you gonna do whatever whatever you gotta do to try to make it work. But I ended up in the on shelter and I was very, very, very stressed out. So they say that the state's supposed to help you. <laughs> Not all the time. So right. what the shelter did was they actually tricked me. They called DHR. They told me that when DHR got there, they talked to me, they brought me around the table. And I'm like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? And they was like, well, there's no complaints on your child or nothing of no abuse of anything like that. But we just was wondering, could we take the child, you know what I'm saying, temporary until mm. you get on your feet. And I was like, you know, real eerie about it when they said it at the time, I'm like thinking to myself, why are y'all here? Right. I, I feel like I'm going through enough as it is right now. I've, I've been betrayed. I'm homeless. I'm here in a place where I don't want to be. You know, so I'm I'm aggravated, irritated with the attitude and a whole lot of things. So for y'all to be up in my face, it's like, it's more to it than this. So they told me if we will take them and put them into a home temporary, no, you don't have to go to court. None of them fees, you know, them legal issues and nothing like that. Miss me, they... You know, I, I to this day I just <laughs> it, it kills me that they 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 caught me at my time of weakness. When your self esteem was low, my self esteem was low and I was weak, and I felt like at that moment in that time that was probably a good idea as far as my son because I'm looking at it like okay I'd rather for him to be somewhere in the home than to be up in here with me. So, quick question. Quick question. Uh where was his father around or Oh no, 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 no. But he oh, wanted okay. to come and pop his he wanted to pop himself up in the picture after the fact. I don't know if that was DHR doing that brought him into the picture, but I found it very strange that he just happens to pop up within the last year and a half. Well they My have to find they have to find the other parent if the other parent is alive. They they do. I do know that for a fact that they search for whether they've been in their life or not. They search yeah, for the other parents. They say that's what they said. They said they have to find other relatives and they have to find. But my thing is, why is y'all even doing all this? Because in the beginning, you told me right. I wouldn't have to do all this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So after they took my son, I had a breakdown because I was like, this is the first time my son being away from me. You know, even though I felt like that was the best decision, but me as a mother. I still felt bad because I'm like, my son is gonna go to the people that he don't even know. 
So I had a breakdown. I ended up in the hospital. I discharged myself out of the hospital in less than 24 hours. And so what I did was I just jumped. I got on my stuff. I just jumped on the ball. I found me a place in less than two or three weeks. I got everything I needed inside of that place, including the beds, you know, and everything. So it wouldn't be no, no issue. and everything. Yeah, returning my son. So they called me in for a meeting. And so I went to the meeting and everything. And when I got up in there, it was like them people just straight turned on me. They was like, well, there was a complaint of neglect, neglection and abuse. And I'm like, what? This is not, you know, this is not, this was not our agreement. You know what I'm saying? It was like, they just took my son and just basically created their own case against me. It was like, so now my whole world just, just ripped apart. It's like, are you serious? Y'all told me I wouldn't have to go through no court cases. Y'all told me I wouldn't have to stand through no judge. The only thing, y'all was gonna hold my son until I got on my feet. I'm on my feet, give me my son. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. These people have had me, has had my son for six years now. For six years now. And I've been in and out of court. In and out of court. In and out of court. Whatever I bring to the table, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. They just switched over my caseworkers about four or five times. I mean, they had got so dirty with the situation to where they even tried to take me to court to terminate my parental rights. Mm. When I knew that they was going to put me on trial to terminate my parental rights, I knew it was an issue then. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go up in here in this court because we was in court for like, it was like I was on trial. I got to say, I was there at 8 o'clock. I got there at 8 o'clock. They called me back there like two hours later. I didn't walk up out that court building until about 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon. The, the accusations and everything that I was hearing when I was inside of that court building, it was just ridiculous. It, it, okay, it was well, let me ridiculous. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question right quick. So, did you were you paying for a lawyer? You couldn't afford an attorney? Were you uh, going down to the free or whatever? The, you know, I know in the cab they got a uh, for families. It's a family service, anyway. It's down at the courthouse, and they give you free um, uh, representation. Yeah. No, I couldn't afford a lawyer, so they gave me a court appointed lawyer, which was yeah, a that's free, right, legal aid, which was a woman. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm gonna tell you something about the lawyers too. Them lawyers is not for you. Oh, if you don't know. have a lawyer, them lawyers, when they say court appointed, they state lawyers, they're really for the state. Because I really mm-hmm. thought when they gave me this woman, I was like, okay, this is the woman. She should understand. You know what I'm saying? So she's going to fight for me, you know, more harder than a, me- a man would because she's a female and she has a family. When I found out that that lady had screwed me even worse in the situation, I mean, she had me signing off confidential paperwork. Cause see, I don't know no better. I don't know no better. I'm just doing everything that is told of me to do in order to get my son back. So I'm signing off paperwork that I didn't even know I wasn't supposed to sign off. And my lawyer sitting right there. So after that, how, I found how old was he when they took him? He was four. And you know, I'm, I'm right quick. Let me say this, and you know that's the age, really, where they really go to selling these kids, trafficking them, and and things like that. Even though it's this, it's a bigger thing out here than people think it is, and a lot of people been. Oh, I know about that sex ring so, trafficking yeah. and all that. That that's what keep me up at night. That's what makes me not be able to sleep. Right. I talk. Yeah. I cannot sleep at night. I've been going through this for six years, not being able to sleep at night, worrying about who's abusing, sexually abusing my son, you know? And to witness a situation when, I'm gonna tell you the worst feeling in the world is to be a mother and to see your son hurting or someone has done something to them and you have no control over it. It's nothing you can do. You cannot even try to save them. <laughs> Excuse Sorry. me. No, no. Girl, go hey. You you on this this platform is not about, you know, you you gonna let it out. Because it's it's gonna be some times when 
actually there was the other day so but sometimes it helped to talk about it. you know what i'm saying yeah take your minute but it was a situation where i had one to see my son and he had a busted lip and i asked him what happened and he told me that one of the foster parents they had busted him hit him in the mouth and she Ooh, was calling they to take him away hey Rachel. Huh? I said, but they want to take him away from you. Yeah, and when they took him from me, he didn't have a scar on his body, but you put him inside of a home, and y'all claimed y'all got this system set up to protect the children, but yet, in y'all in y'all possession, while my son was in y'all possession, I'm witnessing him being abused, and y'all just turning the other cheek, you know what I'm saying? And so, it's like, I'm not nice. Ain't no mother's nice when they see their children hurting. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, I was the best person in the world and I handled the situation good. No, I didn't. I right. made I made threats. I cussed, I fussed, I threatened. I was mad. I am still am angry. Every day, I'm still angry. I'm more so angry at myself because I'm like, how can you have been so weak to let them have done this to you? I just hope that my son don't think that I just gave him away. You know, yeah, you and I talked about that. Yeah, that that's just my biggest fear that he thinks that I don't love him no more. I don't want him no more. Mommy gave me away because of my behavior, and that's not so even. So he's the ten. Thing. He's ten now. Yes, I have. Do you know? Do you know what family has him, or they won't tell you? Uh, no, they won't tell you. But he was in the good home for for a few years. But what had happened was my son' behavior had got out of control he started to become very angry which you can't blame them becoming angry after a certain period of time he became angry he became violent and he started uh, hold on a second um um she she was in alabama but she moved just just less than a month ago she moved but it all happened in alabama real mama go ahead yeah and um i forgot what i was saying Oh, you said he was in a good home for a minute. Yeah, he was in a good home for a minute, but his behavior had got out of control. He started becoming angry. He started becoming aggressive. He started, you know, to lash out at the woman. Just a whole lot of stuff, which is, is usual for a child to do that. You know, I'm thinking that he started getting restless, you know, just restless. Yeah. Of the fact that he wasn't with me anymore. And I'm the only one he known, you know, even from day one, cause I told you about my issue with my mother. So right. it was just me and him. It was just always just me and him. So she put a complaint in and said she couldn't take it no more. But even though she talked to me all the time and she told me, you know, I'm getting, cause she was an older woman. She was like, I'm getting older and I can't be grabbing on him and trying to hold him when he's, you know, having these temper tantrums because he's, he's getting bigger. And I'm not going to be able to control him after a while. So probably try to find him another home. So since then, my son's been in the, they didn't move him into the mental hospital. He was up in the mental hospital, I think, for about a year. And mm. they transferred him mm. to that one and to another one here recently that's in Alabama. I don't even, I think it's Bay Point. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's Bay Point, somewhere in Alabama. And, um, it's just it's just been hectic ever since because even still so it's been times i'm not gonna sit here like it's been times where this stuff just been so hard on me to where i didn't had a fit and i'd be like you know what today is the day where i can't take this no more i'm gonna get these people what they want i'm gonna stand over my parental rights because i can't take this no more i'm sitting here fighting and fighting and fighting and you got people inside of the system that have their children inside the system that's not breaking their ass doing nowhere near as much as I'm doing. And they're not even trying to, you know, give me my son or bring him no closer to me than he should. And I'm just not, I just wasn't understanding it. So a close friend of mine, she had to talk me out of it. She's like, don't don't stand over your parental rights. Don't do it. And I was like, you don't understand. You know, you don't understand the mental, it's, it's putting me through, it's draining. I'm study fighting, this going back and forth to court. It's, it's so much draining than what you think. And then going through all these programs they want you to go through, they want you to take the parenting classes. Then when I get ir aggravated and tired and I snap off on them, now, Miss Green, you need to take ma anger management classes. I went and took the anger management classes, got the certificate. When they took the parenting class, it was like they were taking me. And, and then it started 
the register, I was like, you know what? These people ain't got no, they looking for something. They, they're trying to build a case on me. They don't have a case because if they haven't had a case, they wouldn't have terminated my parental rights a long time ago. It's not me. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing everything right. They just don't have no attention on giving me my son. They're just trying to make money off of my son because especially mm -hmm. now that they have diagnosed him with a mental illness, you know, children that got this, uh, that has problems like that, they make actually more money and they get a bonus. And it's like, meanwhile, it's like when I'm sitting up in these meetings and I'm expressing to them how I feel, and telling them that it's not even about, I don't feel like it's about my son. It's about y'all getting a check and it's about who getting the biggest check off of this child. It's like my voice is not being heard or they labeling me as crazy. Now it's, you know, you need to go and get on some medication and go see a therapist. And it's, and it's like, everything is like, it's, it's driving me crazy. It's like, why I have to be the one? Why it has to be me? Everything that y'all putting me through, I got the right to be angry. I got the right to be pissed, especially since y'all tricked me, because that's how I feel. I feel like I was tricked. Because none of this, yeah. the door, y'all told me I wouldn't have to go through none of this from the get-go. Now, what it is, it's what, six years, and I'm still wrapped up into this triangle, fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. I left the state of Alabama because I saw that I wasn't getting no closer to my goal. I, and my goal is to get my son and bring him home. So I said, you know what? Let me step outside of the dear friction of Alabama and go somewhere else and try to fight from him from another state. Because I see that Alabama is not trying to play fair. You know what I'm saying? No matter what I do, and I told them that. I said, no matter what I do, no matter what I bring to the table, it's not gonna ever be good enough. I, I see that now. You know what I'm saying? I, I see that now. So the last meeting I had with them, I told them straight up. I said, I see y'all not gonna give them to me. So can y'all give them to a family member then? Cause I'm thinking outside the box now. You gotta think outside the box with them. I'm like, okay, maybe if y'all give them to a family member, I didn't say this to them, I'm saying it to my head. Maybe if they give them to a family member, then I can go through the courts and get them back to a family member and it won't be so right. hard. Cause they have you thinking all outside the box. After six years of keep putting you through the same crap, that you eventually start thinking outside the box. You be like, you know what? I didn't get it y'all away for six years. I didn't, you know, like a dog, chased my tails and went around in circles. Let y'all put me in circles. I done took the parenting classes, I can say about 10 times or more. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I'm passing it. It's not like I'm just taking these parenting classes and I'm not passing it. I got certificates, you know what I'm saying? So right. what's the problem? What, what, what's, what's the problem? Then it goes from that to, well, you need to be stable. Whoa. When y'all first got him, I moved so fast, y'all didn't even know what to do. I got a place in three, I got a place in three weeks, two to three weeks. I got a place just like that. I held that place down for two years. He had his own room and everything. What was the excuse then? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now here we is again. Now you're telling me basically, because now I'm not in that spot no more. Because them three years, them two, them two years has passed. Things happened. I had to move, I couldn't afford it by myself. So I ended up having to get a roommate. Then the next excuse is, well, you need to live by yourself. Okay, when I was living by myself, it still was an excuse. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all, it's hard out here. Especially for somebody like me that's just getting a monthly check. It's hard to find a job in Alabama if you don't know somebody, know somebody, know somebody to get into a job. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so, that's like Florida. Yeah. So if this is my only means of living is to go and get a roommate, that's still not good enough. But when I was standing on my own, that still wasn't good enough. That's why I had came to the point where I was just like, I was like, you know what? I started losing weight. I started, couldn't sleep. I have never in my life had anxiety attacks and panic attacks. I didn't start having anxiety and panic attacks until when they separated my family. That's when I started having I didn't even know what them things was until right. one day I had one. It was like every time it was time close to court, I have a real bad anxiety attack or a panic attack. I didn't even know what it was. I thought I was having a heart attack. It took for me to call the ambulance to my house one day. And the men, the, the hey, ambulance. True. Hey, True, hold on a second. We got uh, one proud grandma on with us. Hey. Hey. 
Hi, right, Truth Speaker. Hey. Can you hear? Hey. You can hear him? Okay. Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you just yeah. a little bit low. Oh, ready to come too far from my Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can put my earpiece in. Hold on, give me one. Okay, second. yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's better. Hey, um, Triple Seeker, I'm so sorry to hear that you are going through this and and been through this. Um, The state is dirty. Um, They have been doing this with our kids forever. You know, taking our black babies and removing them out of the home. When there are so much other things they could be doing besides taking a baby out of a healthy environment and then putting them back in and then putting them into an unsafe environment, you know, you just have to keep the faith, my sister. Do not give up your parental rights. Do not do it. Do not do it. You have to just fight. It's I know it's hard for you know it's easier said than done, but just keep believing that. By you doing all these classes, doing all these courses, your son will be home. Do you have, is that me sounding like that? Hold on. Or do you, have you tried, do you have legal aid out in your area? I think you are echoing. Um, are you listening yeah. to the live stream at the same time? I don't time? know what it is. I turned this part off. Hold on, hold on, give me a second. Okay. Let me see. Give me one second. I don't know what. Okay, is that better? Yeah, to me it is. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds better to me. Yeah, but um, have you used all the resources like legal aid, um, family law? She's not talking about the court. Use uh, legal aid. Legal aid told me in the state of Alabama they don't take custody battles. Mm. Mm. Wow. Right. Wow. Now, will it be harder for you to fight for him where you at now, or do you think it'll be easy? Um, are you just hoping are that you it'd just, be easier? You're right. I think so too, especially when you're fooling with Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said I came to another state. And that's why I said sometimes you got to think outside the box dealing with them. So after six years, I'm like, you know what? Who, I'm staying who, here. Who, get them out of room. Who the hell is that? Hell, I ain't. Damn, how I get? Go ahead. Girl, you got your first troll. Mm-hmm. Somebody get him out the room. I will. Him, her, or whoever it is. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, True. Yeah, like I said, you know, sometimes you got to think outside the box with them. So after battling for six years by myself, <laughs> I said, you know, because I had been trying to leave Alabama. I've been. But the only thing that kept me there was him. It was him. Because I said, I can't just up and leave because he's here. He don't have no family here. I'm the only family that he got here. So I was like, you know what? This is not working. I'm just gonna have to go ahead and move and go to Georgia and try to fight them from a different state. And hopefully they'll put it in front of a judge that has more sense. (laughs) Because my judge, believe it or not, it's all, I mean, they was complaining about him anyway. I mean, I had seen him on the news where they, they were saying that he, uh, I forgot exactly what it was, but it was something more so like he's good for terminating people's rights. Wow. Yeah. And when I saw that, I just got scared. I was like, oh my God, that's my judge. You know what I'm saying? I've been dealing with him for over six years. I was like, oh my God. So that that scared me. And I was like, you telling me I'm dealing with a corrupt judge? This is the reason why. And I ain't like going to even sit on the judge neither though, because you know, the caseworkers, they play they they play their part. The lawyers they play their part. Everybody yeah. plays their part, but they try to make it seem like they're for you when they're really not. Nope. So it took me a while to catch on to the fact that you know being nice and you know even my friends they'll tell me you can't talk to them like that. You can't cuss them out. You can't. I'll be like, what? Do you understand what these people been doing to me? I'm supposed to continue to kiss ass and be this nice, pleasant person when I know they straight playing me? When I know they taking me through the ringers on purpose and getting off on it? And you have to look at it like you said, your your son is dealing with um, some mental stuff. It has to stem from him being removed from your home into a different environment. And they looking like, why is he acting out? I mean, duh, it's the obvious. 
it's the obvious. Yeah, yeah, it's to the point where now they can't even find a home for him to get in because that's why he's in the mental hospital now. Because they say every home he goes into, they 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 want to get rid of him because of his behavior. Or when I'm sitting down with a meeting, they tell me, well, it was one meeting that was real strange to me. They was telling me, well, he's walking around now. My son, before he got into the system, he was around pets. He was around dogs. He was around cats. He was around all type of, you know, animals. He know the difference between people food and dog food. Now this one incident, they're telling me, well, he's walking around eating the dog food at the bowl. I was like, well, you must not be feeding him because my son know the dang on different. For him to sit there and eat out of the dog bowl and eat the food, it's something y'all not feeding him. Um, truth seeker, are they giving your son medication? Yes, right Pretty now, you know, like three different medications. Uh, you Lord. know, the state making more for him. That's what make him crazy, mm -hmm. than medicine. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, not to put it like this, but y'all already heard about the pipeline to school to prison system, right? Oh, wow. I know a little bit about it. I, I okay. have really... The pipeline to prison to school is when you're living in a low income community, um, the chances that the kids are in public school, they're building more prisons than left schools, but they're also using that tactic with kids in foster care too. Cause the um, she right because they put him in a school like that because he was acting up in school. So they put him in the school because he kept getting suspended. He kept getting suspended. So they put him in the school where he couldn't get suspended in. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself then, I said, they done put him in something like a little prison. Mm -hmm. That's exactly I, what it is. And they get is. so much money for each kid too. Yes, they do. Uh-huh. I know mm -hmm. that too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I Meanwhile, all this money off my son. Meanwhile, y'all making all this money off of my son. And just like I told him in the last meeting, y'all claim this is best for the child. This is not what's best for the child. I said, it's not even about me no more. I don't even care about myself. I care about my child's well-being. Do y'all not see that ever since y'all have had him, his behavior has been got worse? He's doing things that he was not doing when he was with me. Wow. I had my son, I had my son, I'm gonna give you my little quick help. My son was, um, had behavioral problems. He was going in and out, getting out of trouble, going in and out of juvenile hall. So I finally sent them to a group home. But during all this, they were so quick to put my son. Uh oh, she went out. Where am I? Like she went out. Yeah. I could still see her on the screen, but I don't know what happened. Okay. Maybe she just lost her, um, uh, auto. Oh, she pushed mute. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Anyway, they try to put they put my son on medication. That medication made my son want to jump off the balcony and commit suicide. At the age of eleven, my son admitted himself to um to the mental um the, the state you know the state mental hospital. He stayed there. I end up letting my son go to a group home. He stayed there for a year. Um, when he got off the medication, they was trying to have me give up my parental rights, but that was not going to happen. They were trying to be slick with that shit. They'll throw you a whole bunch of papers in front of your face. You're already in distress. You're already lost. You're already confused. And these uh -huh. papers in your face and on um, right off of your grief and your hurt, and you're not, you're not knowing what you're really signing. So I, I didn't give up my parental rights. I sent them to the group home. He stayed there a year. He came back home. He had a little rough start. My son was off of medication. My son graduated out of high school. My son is thriving and surviving. That medication is what's messing our babies up, especially our brown babies. Yes, not to cut you off, Grandma, but they did me the same way. After they tried to take me and put me on trial to try to terminate my parental rights, nothing but the grace of God saved me because the judge did not terminate my parental rights but do you know what dhr had the nurse to do after that they had the nurse to send somebody over now if i wasn't paying attention to that paperwork i think i'd be in prison today mm. i happens to read because normally i just you know sign it off and go go along what they say because i just wanted to do whatever whatever it is that they needed me to do but this specific day it was after court like i'm gonna say about a month after court because it took a month for the judge to come up with a verdict they don't tell you right then and there they're sent it through the mail that's how they did me they sent it through the mail and told me what the judge verdict was that's how they do it in alabama i don't know how they do it in other states but um they sent a, a case worker to my house with some paperwork they told me that he was coming over there for some paperwork for his schooling for me to sign off 
okay, they sent me that paperwork and it was another type of paperwork. And I couldn't understand the legal terms of the paperwork. And I kept reading it. And I'm like, what is this? You know, and I asked the lady, I said, what is this? And she was like, just sign it. And I was like, but I don't know what this is. What is this? I'm reading it and I'm not understanding what is it saying, right? And she was like, well, just, this is just, just sign it, you know what I'm saying? And then just get to the other paperwork as far as his schooling is concerned. And so I kind of, cause I was at her, I was at her car. So what I did was I picked the paperwork up and I sat on top of her car. I said, no, nah, I'm gonna have a lawyer look at that because I feel some real fishy about that paperwork. And she snatched the paperwork away from off the top of the car. She said, don't worry about it. So I was like, okay. So I read the other paperwork. It did have something to do with retaining to his schooling. And I signed off on that. So right when she left, I called my um my lawyer. And she told me straight up, she was like, do not sign no paperwork that's coming from DHR. I said, I did. I signed the piece of paper that had something to do with his school. And she was like, that's fine. She said, because what DHR is trying to do now, they're trying to get you to sign over your parental rights. I was like, what? She was like, that's probably that piece of paper. When you kept asking her what that was, that's probably what that piece of paper was. That's how dirty, that's how dirty and low down they go. Wow. So, um, so your parental rights aren't terminated? No, it's not. I actually spoke to my caseworker uh, three days ago in Alabama to find out what was going on with my son. And she told me he was still in Bay Point and she gave me a phone number, you know, to call him. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I have not talked to my son within two months. Because every time I talk to him, he's telling me something somebody is doing to him. And they kill and I, you. I that takes a piece of your soul. Right? Yeah, I can't do nothing about it. And, it. and it bothers me and it makes me angry and it makes me act outside of my character. Mm -hmm. But I know I have to talk to him because two months is a long time to a 10 year old. So I'm trying to boost myself up to make that phone call. I was supposed to make that phone call two days ago. Every day I tell myself, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. I got to get the strength to call him in order to sit on the phone and listen to his complaints. Right. Well, you know, in them hospitals like that, they they abuse the kids too. And I hate to say that, but oh yeah, you know, that's I was watching a doc lip documentary lip. on it. That's where he got his bust lip at. When I had seen him and he had got his bust lip. That's oh, when on um, I flipped out. I was like, he told me that they slammed him on the floor and that's how he got his busted lip. So I was like, y'all slamming children on the floor now? Well, we don't know nothing about that. I said, but my son told me he was slammed on the floor, on his mouth, the way how he got that busted lip. Now, when y'all got my son, he didn't have a scar on his body, but I'm being accused of abu abusing him though. Wow. I'm being accused of neglecting him though. Dang, wow. I, I, I don't I and mean, you know and the thing about it is, when you call, you scared that they're going to go do something to it because he told on them. Exactly. And that's another thing. Somebody had to tell me about that. They was like, stop cussing them out. Stop going off on them when they when it's something because they might be doing stuff to him behind your back. So I'm like, so what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to sit here and act like these things are not happening. I can't talk to my lawyer because my lawyer is with them. He's not with me. You know what I'm saying? So what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, so you telling me the only thing that's in between me and my son, for me to get my son back, is between $3,000 and $5,000 in order to get me a real lawyer. Cause that's wow. what it all comes down to. I need me a real yeah, lawyer. Yeah, I'll get ready to say, I'll get ready to say, we had to do that to, uh, with my husband's daughter. Uh, would you finna say something, Grandma? Yeah, I was also about to say that with my son, after they put him in the group home, the state, don't you know they was trying to make me pay child support plus they were getting money mm -hmm. from SSI and what the state was paying them for the group home? I believe they it. was trying to get me to sign paperwork for him to get SSI. They told me that they wouldn't give it to them. They was like, so we need you to go down there to the social security board so you can, I said, I'm gonna tell you like this. What? I said, y'all won't what? be signing no paperwork until I get him back in my custody. I said, y'all making enough money off of him. What? I said that's the reason why Social Security won't give y'all no check for him because they know y'all getting more enough money off. Well, of they him. get more than enough for your son. Uh, read that. Read, can you see the screen? Or you can't yeah. see the screen. Uh, true secret. Have you tried reaching out to lawyers in Alabama where you see if they can take pro bono? I tried that. I tried that. 
I try. I mean, y'all just don't know how many lawyers I've called to try to see if they'll get a pro bono, to give me a pro bono. And none of them will budge. None of them will. That state is set up for money. That state is strictly set up for money. To me, it sounds like a little bit more than that to me. I heard about Alabama and their laws against um, kids right. being placed into CPS. Yep. And how their system is really broken down there. I'm from California, by the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus, because we have so much resources where I'm at. So many resources in California that they try to keep the kids in the home, but you just have to work with them. But down south is totally different. So it sure is. Off, it's hard, it, huh? It sure is. <laughs> so this is what I deal with. I even went so far as they say I need to be on medicine. Okay, I went and seen y'all look psych y'all 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 psych y'all psychiatrists. I went and got on the medicine. I took the medicine. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's nothing wrong with me. I'm just angry. I'm angry. And then they sit down at a table and they's like, why are you so angry? I said, you know what? I didn't even become angry until y'all broke my family apart. Now I'm the crazy one. Is this your right. only child? No, I have two. My daughter is with my mother. She's in she, she's in Virginia. She didn't have it ever since she was born. So I just, you know, I can always get my daughter if I want to get her. But yeah. she didn't been with my mama and been in that environment for so long. It'd be selfish to me to snatch her from that environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So me and my mother, we just came to an understanding that she come and visit me and I see her when, you know, when school is out and holidays and stuff like that. But for the most part, she stays with my mother. Okay. Yeah, they, and they, uh, I don't get why they was trying to put, try to act, make you get on medicine when all this stuff is not of me being mental. It's about me being hurt, sad. In my Probably life. because of my actions, because of the way I was acting. Yeah. When all this was going on, you know, calling, snapping, making threats and stuff like that. That's probably why they thought I was crazy. But mm -hmm. that was just that was coming from a place of hurt. That's a but natural response for a mother, and any that's a natural response for any mother that cares for their child at the right. end of the day. Oh yeah, I'm that. Ooh. I am so, so, so sad. This is real happening. mama's uh, real problems live in Virginia, too. Oh, uh, what part of Virginia? Yeah. So how does your daughter? My daughter, she's 12. She's good. She's, 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 she's wonderful. And they, yeah. you know, they wouldn't even give my mom my son. Because she tried to step in and get my son. And they right. told her. What going to say? They told her she don't make enough money. Wait a minute, what? Yes, what they told my mother that she didn't make enough money and they also told her well if you want to get them you need to go through she needs to take um not parenting classes it's foster care classes foster and my care class to get why should i have to take foster care classes to For get my, my son? so my mom she's already working two jobs and you telling you telling her basically within them two jobs she's still not making enough money to get my son because i can honestly say that was the first time i actually felt sorry for my mom because she came crying to me she was like they won't give me my grandson because they're saying that i don't make enough money i'm like are you serious that don't make sense it right, doesn't they, they're supposed to reach out to the next of kin yeah nothing dealing with alabama makes sense i can i'll tell anybody that's a backwards ass state a, girl let me tell you at, something at the end of the day what? if okay at the end of the day if your mom um, I've worked around this situation with other people and their families. If your mom wants to get your child, either she'll get the, the SSI for your child, which her income has nothing to do with it, yeah, or exactly. you'll be able to get cash aid and food stamps to your child. So I don't understand what her income got to do with her not getting her grandson when y'all paying these other people thousands and thousands of dollars a month for my son. And they're not exactly. family. Exactly. I That's guess they were for that money to stay in the loop. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. That's bullshit. And, and another thing, and another thing that's a black male. Yeah. So, guess yep. what? Yeah. They want and him to go into the prison system. Now they have down, that diagnosed him with some type of mental illness because, you know, they got to say he crazy now and he's acting up. So that, like I was saying in the, in the, in the beginning, that's more money right there. That's like a bonus. Oh, yes, Chesapeake. Yeah, I know that. But I'm thinking it's wow. wearing him down, though, believe it or not, because they can't even find a home to place him in at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because he'd have been in so many homes. 
and so many people claim that they're scared for his for their lives and this to the third that's the reason why he's been sitting up in the mental hospital because so he's long. trying to get home to his mama exactly but that's they're starting to run out of options i'm starting to see that when i the last meeting i went to they was running out of options and i couldn't do nothing i know this may sound mean but laugh at them in their face at their meeting because it's like now y'all don't even know what to do and they was like well we don't know what to do i said i know what y'all could do and they was like what and i said give me my son back mm-hmm just and then have all the services that he can have and when you get a place in your home it's still continue having all the services he needs for his mental health his educational his IEP all that there is a way that they can work this out this baby and then they use it. reverse psychology on me because of me spazzing out and going off they say well we want to make sure that you don't spaz out on the child the way you spaz out on us if you become impatient so <laughs> So they're using your your actions and your feelings against you. That's what basically, basically. She said, "I would never forget when she told me that we want to make sure that you don't spaz out on him when when you get impatient, like how you get impatient with us." <laughs> That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. <laughs> and, and you the wonder what this is that you don't want your son stuck in no mental institution that's of course. that is not healthy for that baby of course not especially for how long he's been up in there yes. and i didn't make peace with the fact that when he do if i ever do get him back you know how many years of therapy he, i'm gonna have to put him through mm -hmm. he's not gonna never i mean never be the same ever when i get him back ever i like what you said when i get him back Mm -hmm. um, listen, problem, have problem, you tried in Georgia to get an attorney? Um, no, I haven't been here for 30 days yet. I have I don't even have a roof over my head. I'm staying with a friend of mine. I need to get myself oh, okay. a sandwich before I even, oh. you know, even start aiming for that. I want to make sure I have a roof over my head so it won't be no excuses. I want to make sure my system can't is hardly clean. Hear you, uh, real, uh, Grandma. I can't. Even, I can't hardly hear you. What did you I say? I said, did you read Real Mama's problems? She said, um, does your son has a guardian illegal, or does he has a representative? A representative? Yes. Child? Yes, he does. He has. A, he has a. He has a legal guardian that be there inside of the meetings. Some white dude. I don't know. <laughs> that the state got for him. Mm -hmm. The state. No, yeah. Make yeah. Money. yeah. Now he's they he's making a money. paycheck. The, the the mental hospital is getting money from the government. Mm -hmm. They also. But you know what? See, you remember when we had our government shut down? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like almost as if it was on the tip of their tongue that they wanted to give them back then because they wasn't making no money. Mm. That's when you should have went full force. And I have to say it, I was hoping, I had my fingers crossed that that government shut down last year longer so they could have gave me back my son. So they weren't getting paid no more. They wasn't getting paid no more. It was on the tip of their tongue. I can almost tell they was finna stay because they was like, they was running out of, you know, running out of funds and they was doing talk like that. And I'm like, it's so funny y'all talking about funds and stuff while we going through this government shutdown. And see, you know, all this stuff that Queen talk about, like the pizza gate and all this stuff going on. See, that's that type of shit. If I'm glad that my kids are grown now, because like some of you have little kids, that shit is like scary now. That shit is scary. Like, you just don't know what their agenda is. You don't know. You know, it's next thing you know, they're going to tell you they moved it. It's a new form of slavery, my sisters. It is. It's she true. is absolutely it's right. Slavery. It is. Because for real, for real, I've been a slave to the game for six years. And that's all I kept saying to people. I mm -hmm. feel like I got shackles on my feet. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's like when I say that to people, it's like they didn't understand what I'm saying. I'm like, yo, I'm a slave to the game right now. And all I want to do is be free. And I still am. You know what I'm saying? Technically, I still am a slave to the game. I don't want to be a slave to this game no more. Right. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Oh my God. It's I know. okay. It's okay, Lucy. Could you imagine just fighting? For but I did it to myself. I did it to myself. I would tell anybody out there if the state trying to help you, do not get help. Don't seek help from them because they're not trying to help you. They're trying to help themselves. I really thought that they was trying to help me, and they, they, they their agenda was not that was not out to help me. Their agenda was out to help themselves. 
Have y'all noticed that this is going on? They're locking up our black men and taking away our children, us women. And they shooting and killing our black mm -hmm. men and our children too. The police mm -hmm. department, they, it's going crazy. They killing the women, the children, mm -hmm. anybody. Yes, it's like they, they, it's like that we're we're at we're at, in, at war with a war we didn't want. No. Exactly, no. exactly. We are, we are. And to leave us women so vulnerable and alone, that's even the biggest, scariest thing. You know what I'm saying? You know. Yup. And then they, they say us, well, us black women, we 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 got so much hate in our heart. We we so mean. We so this. Look what you're doing to us. You're tearing our families apart. You're taking our children from us. You're taking our husbands from us. You're putting us in a vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when, uh, there's so many of them, I can't think, oh, uh, what is it, Fidel Castro? Mm -hmm. the, the guy up in Minnesota? You know, that day that that happened, I was watching that live. I was actually watching that live. I was watching that girl's live. And the, the pain and the tears, I was like, oh my God. I was telling my husband, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is what just happened. Like, it was so crazy to me. It was so crazy to me that in front of this four year, and then he unloaded and the little girl was behind him. After he told him to get his wallet, after he told him, I got a license, I got a gun, whoop -de -whoop. okay, let me see your license. As soon as he reached for it, you shoot him. And that girl was so scared that she broke me down to pieces. Hold on, y'all, for a second. I'll be right back. I'm right y'all there. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know, but the reason why me, her, and I got into this conversation is when I first started going live, you know, and I've been telling the story about my baby. And when she first commented, I thought her baby had passed, but she said, uh, you know, it, the state had took her baby away. And I'm like, damn, that's just, just as bad. But I told her, you know, at least she can still try to fight. And I know she's wore out. Six years is a long time. Every single day of your life, you think about your kid. Every day. That's got to be some terrible It's just shit. like being in a boxing ring and you keep going six rounds. Non non you keep fighting nonstop. And I don't even know what to say. Like, I mean, I wish, I wish... You know, money is power. Ooh. And if you have money, that'll never happen to you. Ooh. No matter what oh, color you are. If I, had, if I had three or five grand sitting around, my son, I probably would have been here, my son. But we poor. We don't, I don't have three or five grand sitting around. And it's hard right. to even Me try to sure. work to come up with three and five grand when you got other responsibilities that you have to handle. And they know that. They know that. Yeah, yeah they know mm -hmm. it. It's a trap. They know it. It's a trap. A catch twenty two. I'm damn if I do, and I'm damn if I don't. Basically, y'all. As soon as you get, as soon as you enter that shelter, they looked at your background. Mm -hmm. They looked at your parents. They looked at what you've been through, and they seen you as easy prey, and mm -hmm. and, and you were, and you yep. were because you end up mean? giving it to them. Especially in those shelters, they be that's what it. Mm, that's the pipeline. That's the pipeline mm -hmm. right there. A vulnerable black I woman. I thought I that shit was actually going to help me. I thought, I thought that they was actually going to actually help me. And they I did. Yeah. They stabbed me completely in my back. And everything has been going downhill since then. Let me tell you. I, had, I, I was um, in a domestic violence relationship. I took my girls. Well, I had sent my son back to live with his father. But... I, I had took my girls and we was in there one night and this lady, I'll never forget this lady, this, lady, this, white, lady, this white lady. She said, I'm gonna need you to leave in the morning with them girls. She said, cause let me tell you something. And I promise y'all, I didn't know about all this back then, about the conspiracy and then what they were doing and kidnapping. She said, I'm gonna need you to leave here in the morning and do not come back to these shelters. I don't care where you got to go. So I'm looking at this lady like, what? And she said, look at me, what, and listen to me what I'm telling you. Shit, you ain't got to tell me twice. So I call home and ask. I call I home. I wish I got to get some money from everybody. So I got money for, uh, you know, those weekly hotels. So you know, they was my family was calling, paying like for a month at a time for me. So I wouldn't have to go back to that. But I'll never forget that lady face, and I'll never forget that. I did not know what she mean. She never told me what she meant. But I got the hell on that next morning. Mm. So she was probably talking about the same thing. 
She was, and this was, was back that part early she was. Because that's basically the same shelter I was in. It was a woman's battle shelter. Yep. Yeah, they did my cousin the same way. And she didn't took up law and took and passed the bar exam. <laughs> the well, she was going business for herself. herself. The That's what I told her, too. I told her to represent me in my case, but she didn't became so encouraged in that department. She was like, you need you a real lawyer. I said, you is a real lawyer. Right. Right. Yes, when they're taking them from good homes. I mean, yeah. I, you friends smashed it. I still wouldn't call DHR wrong, but I say they need their children cooking from them. What happened to um, the truth oh, seat? Oh, we play America around on this screen right now. Now you get the bottom. <laughs> they knock me off yes, and I sit right man. back. Come back and that's right, girl. That's all you need to do with your son. Just keep fighting, boo. Keep fighting. Keep fighting for your baby. You don't want to see my story. That's fine. I guess I'm speaking too much truth up here, so they had to knock me off. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Just keep you know, fighting for your baby. Don't give mm -hmm. up. Yep. So <laughs> I noticed that's why I, I would leave you. I didn't care about what I was hearing about that stuff. I, I just didn't. Me either. It's like, whatever. Keep that off of YouTube. It Everybody. doesn't matter, though. Like, it doesn't matter. If she says she's mixed, she's mixed. What, who am I to tell her she's not? Like, I don't I, know her. I'm not going to question you. That's I didn't have nothing against her. See, that's not how I'm trying to build my platform. I see they trying to shut off, shut down. Because, first of all, I'm not. I don't care. I'm not finna uh, talk about another channel holder. If that other channel holder want to come in and discuss what happened with them, that's fine. But me, I'm not gonna talk about. Expect. I mean, what for? Because I listen to a lot of people, and it's like three or four I really, really listen to because I like their content. But then you got people out there talking about their background, what they've been in prison for. Um, what they doing to women i don't give a damn i'm listening to their content i don't care what they did it's not my problem yeah <laughs> i'm thinking about going on my own platform and sharing it once again yeah her her her, her uh reception she she was off what do you want to say truth seeker Oh, I don't want to say nothing. I was just listening. Oh, okay. But I'm going to get ready to end this live. Um, but I enjoyed everybody. And yeah, you can share it. Just tell her to blur my face out. I don't care about my yeah. boy. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye.